What's up YouTube, Alex Bowman back with part two of how to become a fighter pilot. If you haven't checked out part one on selecting a commissioning source, go ahead and check that out. Today we're gonna talk about the three things that you must accomplish on your path to becoming a Navy fighter pilot. The first one is your SF-86 background investigation. Second is your ASTB or aviation screening test battery. And third is your aviation flight physical. We're gonna cover those topics as well as answer a few common questions at the end and I'll give you my take. First, let's talk about the background investigation. This is a standard SF-86 background investigation for national security purposes. And this is how you're gonna obtain a secret clearance. Now the background investigation entails filling out the SF-86, which I've linked below for you to take a look at. And then you will sit down with an investigator to discuss your background. Everything from where you grew up, where you live, who your friends are, and any criminal activity that may be in your past. Realize the cleaner your record, the better off you are and the stronger candidate you are for becoming a fighter pilot. Now, if you do have a misdemeanor on your record, it's not the end of the world. The Navy can be lenient with those sort of things, but you have to be forthright and honest with your background talking to the investigator. Realize the investigator probably already knows the answer to every question they are asking you. So the last thing you wanna do is lie. If they do catch you in a lie, then there's no chance that you're gonna proceed along this road to becoming a fighter pilot. Now let's talk the Aviation Screening Test Battery or ASTV. Now this test is comprised of a group of subtests meant to act as a predictor for your academic performance during aviation pre-flight indoc and assess your aptitude for flight. This test has changed quite a bit since I took it, but the topics remain the same. Those topics include math, basic arithmetic, algebra, geometry, probabilities, and word problems. It also includes reading comprehension, mechanical comprehension, aviation and nautical knowledge, as well as your aptitude or perception for spatial reasoning. Now there's a lot to talk about with the ASTB. So I've dropped a link that provides some pretty helpful information on the structure of the ASTB and what the focus of the ASTB is, how it's graded, et cetera. So you can check that out. The important thing to know about the ASTB is you're gonna take it around your junior year and realize you can take the test a maximum of three times. If you do have to retake the ASTB because you're not satisfied with your score, you must wait 30 days before the retake. When I studied for the ASTB, I spent about two weeks studying. Uh, one week was during class and I would just get an hour or two in in the evenings. And then the other week was over spring break where I was able to dedicate four or five hours a day to reviewing practice problems, reviewing the math, and trying to learn as much as I could about the ASTB and the structure of the test. I used the Barron's ASTB study prep. That was the only book I used. And then I tried to find practice problems online. I felt very prepared for the ASTB after using those study resources. It may have changed at this point, but there's a lot of study resources online. The key is to do as many practice problems as possible before the test. The third hurdle we're gonna talk about today is the aviation flight physical. And for me, this is by far the most stressful part of the commissioning tract. The physical is to determine if you're in good overall mental and physical health, as well to ensure that you don't have any systemic disease or medical problems. You can do everything in your power to stay healthy leading up to the flight physical, but you really never know the outcome until it's over. That being said, you have to stay healthy, you have to stay in the gym, eat right, definitely stay hydrated and get a good night's sleep prior to the flight physical. Now I get a lot of questions about eyesight and different medical things that may be disqualifying for a naval aviator. I attached a link in the description below that is specific to naval aviation and the medical requirements to become a pilot. I'll read a couple to you here regarding eyesight. Um, specifically, applicants must have 2040 or better, uncorrected vision correctable to 2020, normal color and depth reception. So if you have questions about eyesight, uh, there's a lot more parameters regarding eyesight on this link and in this document. So if you do have a question or you're on the border there, I would say take this document to your IDOC. 
I did this exact thing. I took the document with me to the eye doc and said, hey, I want an eye exam. Do I meet the requirements to be a pilot? Fortunately, I did realize the Navy is a little bit more lenient now than they used to be with vision, with uh, updated surgery techniques. So if it is correctable to 2020 with LASIK or PRK, then that is acceptable. I would say wait till that surgery has been approved by the Navy and hopefully they will pay for it. If you have any other medical conditions or issues, you're not necessarily disqualified from following a pilot track and that's because waivers are a thing and waivers are the way to get you through this pipeline. I had two waivers for medical moving forward. I had childhood asthma and I tore my ACL playing soccer in high school, which had to be repaired. Both of those could have been disqualifying. However, with a waiver, I was able to proceed with aviation training. Now, if you do have to get a waiver, realize that goes through NAMI or the Naval Aerospace Medical Institute. They will take your paperwork, review it with a group of doctors, and determine if you are physically fit to proceed with pilot training. Suffice it to say, the aviation flight physical is a stressful scenario. The best thing you can do for yourself is stay healthy, hydrate, and get a good night's sleep prior to the physical. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about are some common questions that I've been asked about becoming a Navy fighter pilot. So I'm just gonna read through a few of these here and I'll give you my take. So first question, what should I major in to become a Navy fighter pilot? Well, that's a good question. The Navy puts more emphasis on technical degrees. So when I talk about technical degrees, we're talking about math and engineering degrees. These math and engineering degrees will also open up doors later on in your Navy career if you have any interest in becoming a test pilot. Now, that being said, you can major in anything and uh, still become a Navy pilot. I was a biology major and uh, it worked out for me. I have a lot of buddies who are liberal arts majors. Just realize I believe the chances are gonna be better if you have a technical degree. And the reason I say that is because when you get selected to become a Navy pilot, your commissioning source, whether that be a service academy or ROTC, puts together a selection package that is sent to the selection board for them to review. That selection package includes your GPA, your major, your ASTB scores, your physical fitness scores, and your preference. Now, of those five things, the most heavily weighted are your GPA and your ASTB scores. After that, they do take a look at what your major is. And those majors are broken down into three categories. You have technical majors, you have science majors or life science majors, and then you have liberal arts majors. Each of those has a different weight. The technical majors are weighted the highest with let's say three points. The life sciences are weighted two points. And then your liberal arts major is weighted around one point. So, if you are trying to accumulate the highest number of points to be selected as a Navy pilot, then your best chances of doing that are to switch your major to a technical major to get the most points possible during that selection process. Now, I say that, but really the most heavily weighted things, like I mentioned, are the GPA and ASTB. If you have a high GPA and you do well on the ASTB, then it really doesn't matter what your major is. All right. Next question. Do I have to be a US citizen to become a Navy fighter pilot? The answer is yes, you have to be a US citizen, whether that's by birth or naturalization. Uh, you must be at least 19 years old and no older than 32 years old upon commissioning. Do I have to have previous flight experience? The answer is no, you do not have to have flight experience. The Navy will provide that flight experience for you, particularly if you are in a service academy or in ROTC. The summer prior to your senior year, you will likely go to an aviation squadron if you are interested in aviation and they will introduce you for three to five weeks to what it's like to be an aviator in the Navy. You will get some flight experience there. The rest of your flight experience will come after you are selected as a pilot. 
and that will be in the form of an introductory type flight school, whether it be flying a civilian aircraft. That was uh, the process when I went through, um, is you rack up hours in a Cessna. If that's not the case, then you will get your flight experience in your training platform once you uh, make it through Aviation Pre-Flight NDOC. All right, final question, what classes do I need to take to become an AV fighter pilot? There are no specific classes to becoming a pilot. We talked about what major uh, is best and gives you the best odds of becoming a pilot. However, you are required to take a certain number of classes for ROTC uh, as well as at the academy. Really the big classes that you are required to take are a calculus-based class. And I remember having to take two semesters of calculus and two semesters of physics. Um, so that was calculus-based physics. Those are really the big hurdles as far as classroom activity. If you are in an ROTC program, you will have to take a naval science class each semester uh, while you're in school. Um, but those are pretty straightforward and it's just simply military training and learning about your career path moving forward. Those are the big questions we have so far. I hope you've enjoyed this video, found it informative. I will do my best to answer any questions you have. Leave a comment, let me know what you think, let me know what material you would like me to cover, or if you have any additional questions or suggestions for the channel. Subscribe and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks, see ya.